Okay, this is a tutorial on the navigation of GarageBand. This can be a little confusing when you first start. So these are all my tunes. I just clicked on the app and nothing was open at the time. So here are all my tunes. And when you're starting a new file, you can click on the plus sign in the top right corner. And then notice at the top it says live loops or tracks. So which one you choose will determine what kind of uh, template you're given. So for the live loops, you have a template that looks like a grid. For the tracks, it's a little bit more like the digital audio workstation template where you have horizontal tracks. So they've designed the live loops in order for you to be able to record loops live, or, or, or I'm sorry, perform live with loops. And um, I'll give you an example. This is one that they already set up. Whether you like it or not is up to you, but they've already set these up. And if you uh, click on the bottom left corner, you can scroll up and down and see all of these loops. You can scroll left and right. When you click one of these, it'll play this loop. And you can loop through all these different... You can loop through all of them. So while you're, you know, basically this could be used for live performance. While you're performing, you could add new loops. You can click one. So you can utilize it as a performing tool. Now I'm going to click on the paper in the top left corner to go back to that home screen. And I'm going to click the plus again. <clears throat> so. If you want to make a live loop track, that's how you do that. If you want to make tracks, it'll go, it'll, it'll give you these options and your audio recorder will work for anything that's related to a microphone. If you have your microphone plugged in to an audio interface and you want to record vocals or an instrument such as a guitar, that'll be having, you'll have to choose the audio recorder track. Um, and they give you two options, either voice or instrument. Um, and by the way, those all come with presets. So you have to understand those presets so you can adjust it for what you need. The drummer track comes in with a lot of different options. You've got your acoustic drum set. You've got a lot uh, uh, electronic drum set. You can choose different drummers for what you want. And also if you go to the drums category, you can choose smart drums, which is a sequencer. Um, or you can choose smart drums, which has um, a lot of options for a drum sound as well as a beat sequencer, which you can actually create the sequences yourself. So there's just a lot of options here. You could pick an amp and then plug in a guitar or a bass. I'm going to just start out with this keyboard and I'm going to go straight to the Alchemy synth. Um, if you click Smart Piano, it brings up this uh, keyboard that's really kind of for beginners. So uh, you could use that if you wanted, but here's an example of a keyboard. And the uh, first sound that you have an option to listen to is called Epic Cloud Formation. And this is a sub, uh, sub sample or a subcategory of the pads, which is on the left here. And then if I go back to main categories, you can see I'm in the alchemy synth within the pads category. So I have other options as well, such as the electric keyboard, grand piano. Um, so those are some options, but what I really want to do is to go over these navigational things. So if you look in the top left corner, you see something that looks like a Mickey Mouse <laughs> and then something that looks like uh, bricks. I'm going to say, follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road. So you click on that and that brings you to your track. Okay. This was very confusing. When you want to go back into the instrument, let's say you want to um, record, double click on that track on the icon and it'll bring you back into your instrument. So follow the yellow brick road brings me back to my tracks. Okay. Now the um, Mickey Mouse ears brings you to your options again. And it's basically saying, Hey, I want to create another track. Now let's say you wanted to add live loops this time. Well, how does that work? So when you do that, let's say I'm in my live loops this is all blank. Follow the yellow brick road. 
oh, I'm back in my tracks. And now I have options. I can either click on the, uh, do you see this grid top left corner? It looks like a four by three, 12 little circles. Okay, so there's my options I have and I can add instruments here <clears throat> horizontally for the live loops and then yellow brick road brings me back to my tracks. And then the keyboard brings me into my piano. Now, the top left, you also have these uh, mixer settings here. So that brings up a sidebar. So that brings the sidebar in and out. And the sidebar has a lot of information for that one particular track. So if I click Yellow Brick Road, you'll see I'm in my track. And when I close that, it opens it up and it closes it again. Okay, so that's how you get to that. And then <clears throat> you have all these different um, plugins, EQ, master effects, you have your quantization in here, your transposition, your recording. So those are all interesting uh, and helpful. And then you also have this FX tab here, which gives you the options of utilizing some additional effects. Um, this is good for like electronic music or if you wanna have a sawtooth um, or if you wanna, you know, kind of add some effects it has like a little um you know like a record scratch and so it's got a lot of different things you can do with it and we'll be exploring those effects later fx stands for audio effects and um, you can go into master effects you have some echo that comes with it you have some reverb that comes with it and you can also go into track settings and you can sort of set things up there as well so i hope this is helpful in navigating, um, I'm gonna go to the, uh, I'm in my tracks, I'm just gonna go navigate the, here I am now in my live loops. So notice you can see the effects in the live loops as well, okay? And then um, you can um, click on the tracks and go to the yellow brick road. Let's say I wanna get rid of my sidebar there. You have to go back to the tracks pain in order to do that. So I just wanted to give you that overview. So we're going to start out with tracks because that's linear. And I want to start out with that with you all. And now I'm just going to kind of go through some of these other options, two things that are very important. So the first is the length. So this is set to be tw eight measures. Okay, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that can be frustrating if you have a song that's longer than eight measures, you can click on the plus next to the eight, at the end of the eight is a plus sign. Then <clears throat> you have to click on the section and then it's gonna say, okay, do you wanna have it length set automatically or do you wanna have the length set manually? Now, if you're recording, let, let's say you're making a recording with your piano or your keyboard or you're singing or you have a backing track and you don't know how many measures the song is or you don't know the BPM, you wanna click automatic because then you can just import your audio and play along with it. And it, it can be the automatic length of the audio. Now let's say you're preparing for a song and you know it's gonna be um, 48 measures or you're doing a 32 bar form, then you can set your measures to however many you want. So this might be a little bit awkward to do at the front of your composition process, but you really have to kind of know that before you start. And I think it's because Everything sort of set up, and by the way, to get out of that, just click anywhere. It's sort of set up in this live loops concept as well. So each one of these boxes, if I go to the live loops, is one um, iteration of the length of the song. So when you go look at your uh, live loop examples, I showed you one earlier, those were all the same um they were all multiples of the same length and you can set different lengths of time for each of these boxes. Uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, like I said, this is really deep. <laughs> so uh, I'm back in the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road. Here we are, we're back in the tracks and we have our 32 bars, okay? I'm actually gonna change it now, not that I'm thinking about it, let's change it to automatic. Now, how do I get my uh, tempo? because you see this metronome here is on by default. If I click record, it's default at a certain tempo. To change your tempo, you're gonna click on the gears and then you're gonna go to the tempo and then you can tap to set your tempo. 
I'm tapping and it's very slow. Okay. That's how you set your tempo. I'll set it to 70. So uh, that's how you set your tempo. Now you can turn your metronome on and off with your metronome button. I hope that's helpful to you. Those are the things that you need to know right off the bat, the navigation of GarageBand. And that is the difference between the tracks and the loops. And also in this top right corner, you have this question mark that might be helpful to you as well. Now I'm going to go back to the tracks real quick. Follow the yellow brick road. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between MIDI and audio. So a MIDI track can uh, take information, MIDI information in, and um, when it records, it is a MIDI track. So I'm going to double click here. I'm just going to do a quick recording. Okay, that was terrible. By the way, if you ever do that, you can click on the undo. I don't know if you saw what that was, but it's to the left of the, uh, it's like in between the uh, faders and the recording area that that area is called the transport bar usually. So I'm just going to record real quick. Okay, so just a measure. Now follow the yellow book road. I'm going to go back to my tracks and you can see I can use my two fingers to zoom in and out. So this is set to automatic. Remember I set the song automatic. Now the whole song is going to be two measures. So the first time you record, you probably want to either record the whole thing as a sort of like lay it all down at the beginning, or you can set your number of measures however you want when you first start out. If you only record two measures and you know, oh, I know I need more than that, you can add. So now it just looped them automatically. So that might be confusing. So I'm just going to bring that back and I'm going to zoom in with my two fingers here using the uh, two fingers on the iPad to zoom in as I am sort of like putting my fingers over the, uh, the green. So you can see though, these are MIDI notes. Well, what is all that? Okay, so I want you to click once and then you're gonna go to edit. Now this is what they call the piano roll view. I'm scrolling down, scrolling up, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, okay? So here are the notes and you can see the grid of the time. And uh, here's one measure. And you can see at the top there's uh, notches. So each notch, the big notch is a beach, beats, excuse me. And then the little notches are subdivisions. So uh, if you look at the grid, it looks to me like it's been divided into 16th notes basically. So if I go back to the beginning, I press play, here's what it sounds like. There you go. Now you can take that and kind of um, drag these. It's kind of difficult on an iPad, but you can drag these over and line them up manually. Or if you want to select them, click select all. I just clicked anywhere twice. And it wasn't even a double tap. It was two times very slowly and it gives me the option and I can click select all. And then if I click done, it's still selected. Um, I can quantize. I'm gonna show you that real quick. So I'm going to click on the mixer. I'm gonna click on track settings at the top. Quantization, straight. Now, this is gonna set it up where everything I have just recorded, it was a little bit off, and now I can set it up to match whatever I want it to match to. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna change it to quarter note, even though I know these are not on quarter notes. So what'll happen is the sound has now been snapped to quarter notes only. To see it, I'm going to go to edit. And now here's my quarter notes. So you learn quantization today. That's actually kind of a um, advanced feature. So <laughs> Um, that's not that difficult though. See how it works? It just snaps to whatever you want it. And then whatever you set it to, um, you can do some experimentation to see if it snaps while you record. And then if it doesn't, you can always go back and select what you want to quantize and then you can um, quantize it afterwards. Another thing you can do is to take the end of this and you can you know, bring it back to where you want to have it as a full measure only. 
So let's say I want to make that into a loop. If I click once and then I clip, click loop, you'll see it loop the entire song. It automatically loops the whole song. Obviously, you can move it forward and back and you can split the clip at any time. All right, so I hope that's helpful. I wanted to get through an example of the MIDI. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you add a um, an audio. So MIDI, you can adjust audio. I'm going to add a voice track. Once you record your audio, you're stuck with it forever. <laughs> you can't really make any changes. So here is a, a voice track. I'm going to click on the record. I'm going to talk over it. Here's an example of a voice track. <laughs> All right, follow the yellow brick road, go back to my tracks. Let's say I want to listen to that. Here's an example of a voice track. <laughs> so you can hear it. That's how that set, that's set up. Now I'm going to zoom in with my two fingers. And you can see, here I am. Here's an example. Of a voice. So you see these these lines here. Those are those are that's actually my 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 audio. Okay, so you can actually really get down and dirty with your editing here. You can see that my audio starts right here. So if I wanted to, I could click split. By the way, to get there, I just clicked once on the track and then once on the scissors. Bring the scissors down. Click once to the left of that. Now it's split and click delete. And here we go. Here is an example. Here is an example of a voice track. <laughs> and then, you know, I wanted to also bring your attention. I'm going to double click. This comes with a lot of um, effects. So it has vocal hall. So you see that bottom left? That's the reverb. So just be aware of that. It's going to make it sound like it's in a vocal hall. If you turn it all the way down. Here is an example of a voice track. So there you go. All right, so that's navigation. That's kind of to get you started. I hope that's helpful to you. And uh, stay tuned for more information about how to use GarageBand.